welcome, welcome to day two. And 15.43 just going up wind on Port Tack there. We're trying to configure a course that's fair to the competitors. Starting line is set over to our left here. There's our pin end of the line. And we traverse to the right here slowly. Uh, there's our starboard end as you can see. Got some of the competitors are uh, getting ready. We've got a spinnaker up here. I like to see that. Then a practice set. Spinnaker just coming. I think they're uh, just scoring the pole back, easing the sheet out. The little lure collapsed there. But uh, competitors, people are starting to get uh, ready for um, our series of practice races and starts. Lighter wind than yesterday, last night. Lighter breeze, so teams are going to have to shift gears. Certainly nowhere near as much backstay as yesterday. Fairly medium on the Vang. Medium outhaul, probably no Cunningham. Medium jib halyard. Uh, so really looking to set the boat up for a little bit more power today with the lighter air. Team taking the spinnaker down here, getting in preparation for our starting sequence. We'll be back with you shortly with the start. Well, we're back and we've just given them a three minute sequence here. Interesting versus yesterday, a couple of things really. Uh, one is the starting line is quite a bit longer than yesterday. Coming up, on two uh, coming up on two minutes here. And we talked about, interestingly enough, running the line, timing the line, and trying to figure out which end's favored. And we, we had this idea of equation. Uh, if one end's favored by five degrees, you'll get a 12% advantage of the lateral distance between you and other boats that start further away from the favored end. If it's favored by 10 degrees, you'll get a um, 25 degree advantage, 25% advantage rather. If it's favored by 15 degrees, you'll get a 37% advantage. If it's favored by 20 degrees, you'll actually get a 50% advantage. So longer starting line today, uh, lighter wind conditions. So really the accent is here is gonna be starting on the correct end of the line and also going full power off the line as well. Yesterday it was gusty with a short line. The emphasis was more uh, on keeping the boat level, holding back a little bit and then pulling the trigger and also holding position. Here is more about flat out speed with a longer line really starting on the correct end. Now at this point we should also be looking upwind. Uh, coming over to our weather mark here, you can see it. Weather mark is, uh, is in the picture. You can see there's a sailboat nearby. So crews should be scanning up wind right now, looking for shafts of velocity and trying to position themselves on the line to get to that velocity. Where's the biggest puff coming down? Is it off the right shoreline where that cruising boat is? I'd be watching that cruising boat quite carefully. Um, is it further over towards the bridge? Do we have some Venturi effect coming down from the bridge? Is the wind shifting more to the west? These are the questions the crew should be asking themselves right now when they're thinking about an overall strategy for um, the start. And uh, here we go, boat going upwind. Tacking over. And we'll be back with you fairly shortly here. So three minutes on the way. Now we give them two at two, one at one. Okay. And uh, it's all good. So it's interesting here, the current really is a bit stronger it seems like yesterday. I mean, I could be mistaken on that one, but the current seems very strong today. Uh, could be the strong winds from last night, you know, some wind driven current in addition. Uh, the wind's lighter, so obviously it takes more effect. Now one thing that's interesting that we didn't talk about actually was when you're patrolling the line when you're sailing up and down on port and starboard between the starboard end and the port end one thing that's very good is to just watch the nature of your sail trim typically you'll be reaching say on port tack from the pin end to the committee okay, boat and what you'll find is is if you can ease your sails Three, out your main two, and jib one, getting to the there we go if you can ease your sails out getting uh to the, uh, the starboard end of the line on port, that means you're sailing away from the favored end. That would mean the wind has shifted to the left 
and the pin end is favored. And the way you can confirm or that assumption is you can tack around on the starboard and sail from the committee boat end over to the pin end on starboard tack over to the pin here and here we have the pin end on starboard and if you're having to sheet in the main and jib sailing the same parallel angle that confirms that the pin end is further up went. Now the opposite is true. The opposite, opposite is true if you're running from the pin to the uh, committee boat and you're having to trim your sails in then the committee boat's favoured and if you're running from the uh, committee boat to the pin end and you're having to uh, ease your sails out then that just basically tells you the committee boat's favoured. So less than a minute here. So watching your sail trim carefully as you patrol up and down the, um, the starting line can be very helpful. Let's watch this start. So we're back and we're within 30 seconds here We've got a port tack approacher coming in. There's the uh, starboard end of the line. And uh, fleet setting up. We've got some boats set up pretty early. Here they go. The fleet's off and it looks like you know the line is relatively square when you when you look at the fleet some people have started towards a pin some have started in the middle and some have started towards the starboard end and actually interestingly enough 1535 is going quite well they've got a shaft of velocity there and they've got a pretty decent gap on the boat to lure and they're able to Maintain. So we're seeing a little bit of a right shift here, but we're going to recall the fleet right now. Well, we've recalled the fleet for another start, and we see a wind line coming down actually off that right shoreline, I believe. There's a cruising boat going pretty well down that right shore. So they watch for the wind fill here. It'll be interesting to see what teams pick up on that. And also, I'm looking for people to be doing head to wind readings to see what this new wind direction does because there's a new wind line coming in about 40 seconds and it's going to hit us fairly shortly. We'll be back with you with the next start. Good. So here's the line we're going to patrol right here at the pin end. Give ourselves a nice vantage point from this port end of the line. See how the fleet's going. If we like the start, we may let it go and turn it into a race. That's a race committee decision here. Uh, breeze line definitely coming down. I'm going to traverse very slowly over to the left here. You can see it. And there is that sailboat healing over. Is it two or two? Off the left shoreline. Yeah, two or two. Two or two. So, new wind filling in from the left. Two minutes to go. Here's the port end of the line. Current's ripping on it. Over here we have a boat trying a starboard attack ley line. Fleet's basically electing to go off on port tack away from the starboard end. So I'm anticipating maybe a few more boats starting towards the committee boat end. It's interesting that, um, especially in big fleets, or in any fleet scenario really, you can pick up on where people are going to start at at about a minute 30. They're going to start showing their cards where the density area is going to be. If there's a lot of port tackers sailing away from the uh, committee boat end of the line, as you can see, there's the committee boat, then you're probably thinking there's going to be a high density of boats and there's one minute at the starboard end. We've got a couple of lone boats down here, but the way the fleet's setting up, it looks like they're all setting up to sail on starboard. Uh, sorry, towards the uh, the right end of the line, and if we see a high density area at the starboard end. We might stay away from that. And go for clearer air and start further down the line. Now here we are, final approach. Fleet's coming in on starboard, and it looks like they're sheeted in fairly tight. How much time do we have? 16 seconds, so 
I would say the fleet's going to be late here. Best start is going to be probably the boat, two boats closest to us. You see, you don't want to be tacking within 20 seconds. You really don't. All clear. And look at that. One five. Um, 43 tack, 1578 tacked. There's a nice little roll tack. I like to see that. You can roll the boat today. And 1578 really has jumped jumped into a bit of a lead. Poor tack appears to be very lifted. Try jib in just a little bit more if you could. There you go. And uh, let's have a look at some trim. We've got 1578. Going up wind. We'll pan out them. There's the upper lead to their mainsail and upper lead to their jib. It's fairly good. They're, they're traveling very high on the jib. I like the mainsail trim. That seems to be good. We'll see how the jib looks. They, the jib is awfully trimmed inboard. And we need to watch the, the bottom part of the mainsail. If the jib is trimmed in too tight, you'll find to the center line, you'll see a lot of backwind down low. Now we don't right now. They're, they're doing quite well with that. The very smooth water. They've got the jib trimmed in, probably close to the inside spreader. Upper leech of the main seems to be working quite well. Telltale is flying once in a while and then stalling it's actually stall it's probably like a 40 60 mix right now it's probably 40 percent flying 60 percent stalling but the boat seems to be going quite well and we'll pan over to this other team so the boat seems to be going quite well i would say the minute the boat starts to to gripe up a little bit I would drop that jib traveler down a little bit, just widen the slot, make life a little bit easier. But right now I'd say they're going quite fine. You know, one thing you look for also is the leech profiles of the jib to be fairly similar. And, you know, if anything I'm seeing, maybe the, the upper leech of the jib is a little bit open. We could arguably drop the traveler down a little and trim harder on the sheet. And his attack, his attack on this boat. We, go. we need to speed build, so don't trim the jib too tight. 1535 coming out of the left has made big gains, so there could be a little bit more wind to the left possibly. Looks like, as Malcolm called it actually, the wind does shift to the left at the top here, making port tack lifted and starboard tack headed. It's also going to make Starb attack the uh, favored jive downwind, so it'll just be a bear away set today. Now let's ease that jib. Now they're going for a spinnaker hoist, I like it. They're going for a set without a pole. 1543 made it inside. And they're going for just a bear away, it looks like. Here's a jibe set on this boat. But I like to see the fact that we're throwing spinnakers up. Need the halyard up. That's the, uh, the primary thing. There we go, halyard up. Got a little bit of an hourglass. Now here's a set. Just get it up, bear away. We need to just bear off basically. We've got it up and now fly it. I'd like to see, you know, what's great about today is spinnakers are going up a lot faster. Yesterday we were jiving and taking quite a long time to get sails up and filling, but at least now we're getting sails up. And I like the, the style on 549. Um, you know, they got the sail up, frankly. They got it driving. Uh, and so did 49947, this team here. That's it, they got it nicely trimmed. 
to say the trick of the trade is heel the boat to weather. So this team is, is flying without the chute and they're doing a nice job without the pole of, um, you know, just they've got the boat heeled slightly to windward. That's allowing the shoulder of the spinnaker to fly nicely. They're doing an excellent job of flying the spinnaker without a pole. You can see the effect of crew weight there. We've got a couple of crew on the high side, healing the boat to weather, allowing that upper leech of the spinnaker to fill. And they got the main nicely eased out. Uh, back stays off. Cunningham hopefully is eased. And that spinnaker is nice and steady, as you can see. So that's the technique for flying the sail without the pole there. And they're really doing a nice job. Coming over here. Seeing the spinnaker up, they're doing the same thing. They're doing no pole, I like it. If you're short-handed and it's a short course, don't bother with the pole, if, you know. Um, and a lot of teams are sailing with two today. and So it makes sense. Now for those with full crews, you could go to putting a pole on. There we are, coming in for takedowns. Wide and tight, your goal with the jib is to trim the jib perfectly to the telltales, to every point of sail as the skipper rounds the buoy. Here's a douse here. Now we need the halyard. Got it. Spinnaker's coming down. Gather it in. Just pull the thing in. Now here's an opportunity for 1754 to maybe capitalize and try and cut inside. Get up to close haul. Let's get 47977. Let's get X boat right up to close haul there. Good, they're dousing it. And obviously double-handed, it's you're busy. So 1754 left a little too much space on this side. Something we're gonna practice. We're gonna do a lured mark rounding drill. Two boats coming in from the left here. We're gonna have to raise the jib up, up goes the jib, we're going to have to take the pole down, everything takes longer than you think and I think we're finding that out right now. Um, and the best thing to do probably is just to miss the mark and keep sailing and then take the spinnaker down when the crew's ready. also important to do, if you have to jibe as an integral part of the rounding, consider trimming the main end halfway prior to the jibe. What that'll do is it'll mean that you don't have to trim the whole main end once the jibe's completed and you round the buoy. So consider trimming half the main end before you jibe and then you've only got half to pull in as you come up to close all around the buoy. We're going to be back with you with another race fairly shortly. Well, we're underway again for another race, and um, see, it is a longer line today than yesterday, probably an extra probably four or five volt lengths, something in that region. But it's good in the sense that it forces teams to think about where they want to start. One thing I have noticed is that uh, some teams have been getting too far away and they've been getting caught out when the wind lightens, the breeze lightens, they're late. So, you know, especially in light conditions, 
try and not get more than four to six bolt lengths away from the buoy. Uh, and the other thing is, don't be tacking the boat within 20 seconds. A couple of teams have been tacking within 20 seconds, and there's two minutes, uh, and that's just made them too late. So definitely be tacking and going, you know, outside of 20 seconds, preferably outside of 30 seconds uh, to get the boat going. Um, wind is lighter, so we're looking for more gentle turns, really. More gentle, less turns to slow the boat down. Less abrupt, more speed building. So less than one minute to go here in our second full race of the day, our third start. And uh, again, I would say the closest boat here is 245. My guesstimate right now is that 245 is in a pretty decent spot to get a good start. They're not too close to line, they're not too far away either. So 1754 off to my right here is probably going to be late unless they start on port tack. I mean, if I'm 1754 off to the right of us right now, I'm probably going to port tack at the pin. 15 seconds, they've got no other recourse. Now, see how we're tacking in at 15 seconds? Usually not a good move. But uh, 245 really is, is, should have tacked a long time ago. It's 1578, we're going to tack the fleet. So look at that, the wind went left and 1578 jumped on it and they port tacked the fleet from the left end. Um, 1543 is going up wind now on starboard, but the problem is that 15, the other boat is probably ley line. I'd like to see the boat rolled in these sort of conditions. A little bit of chop here, we need to get this boat going, it feels really stalled. Um, as you see the mainsail leech is too tight and the jib is too tight. We need to get the boat going. This is an instance where you just want to bear the boat off and get it going and go fast forward. Ease main sheet. You can see the upper leech is very, very tight. Ease main sheet and jib in. Now the jib's too loose right now, so it's just a tiny, tiny, um, tiny adjustment. See it's too loose, it's luffing up high. Anyway, they're tacking over. And with the tack, there's no, there's no, there's no um, rush to go from one side to the other. Port tack is definitely lifted at the mark right now. We can afford to trim that jib in harder. You can see that uh, top batten. Trim it into the top batten is at least parallel, and the middle batten is at least parallel to the center line of the boat. And now the boat's going better. I feel doing a, a nicer job once the wind has kicked in. As I say, if the boat's not going well, ease the main sheet slightly and open the upper leech and get the boat going. Crack the jib slightly as well, and now we can afford to, to trim harder. You can see that upper batten on the jib. The upper batten on the jib, we can't quite see from this perspective. Let's see if I can get a little second here. The upper batten on the jib is too open. That's what your jib looks like when it's not trimmed hard enough. You can see the you can see the upper batten too open there. We can afford to trim the jib sheet on harder and bring that batten more back towards parallel to the center line. Okay, we've got the first spinnaker set. I like to see these sets without the poles. Um, it's set on 1578. Here's the rest of the spinnakers going up. 1543 is going for a hoist. 47977 has got a good hoist going. Aggressive hoist on 1509. Get the current. 1754 looks like they're going to be able to uh, get it going pretty good. Inside, maybe if I'm 1754, I'm diving inside right now. Any luck on that loud hail or is it? Yeah. 
Yeah, we're doing this. Great. Thanks. The spinnakers are starting to get going here. 549 is, is short-handed. They're, they're figuring out a few things. Um, black spinnakers going well. You notice how they're... Uh, let me pan back a little bit. Notice how they're healing to weather. That's getting the boom up in the air. That's really helping. And um, let's see how 1543 does. Well, we've got the uh, spinnaker going here on, on my dead body. And we're also got the spinnaker going on the boat to weather. I'm going to do a little bit of, uh, of instruction here. We'll be back. So nice job here. We've moved the spinnaker trimmer to weather to, to try and get the boom up in the air. We've, um, we've moved the pole tip down to try and keep the uh, sail uh, with a vertical profile. And the inboard and the outboard ends of the pole are relatively even. We made some adjustments there. Groups coming downwind, flying the spinnakers. Do a lured takedown, obviously short-handed today, so the crew's busy to say the least. So, big opportunities at the Lewitt Mark here to make gains. We're back again, and again, if you're a crew, you're scanning upwind now, once you've done your mechanics, you're looking up to that bridge and you're saying to yourself, where's that next shaft of velocity coming from? Is it down the middle of the river? Is it to the left? Or is it coming down to the right? And let's position ourselves on the starting line to get to that velocity first. And again, as I was saying earlier, using cruising boats as a reference guide can be very good. You know, you see one boat off to the left, they don't have much wind. A boat to the right of them has more wind. And you can tell that, you know, that's where the new wind's going to come. Anyway, we'll be back with you shortly. So it's a real good time to be scanning up wind right now and looking for new wind. So pin ends heavily favored. Now obviously normally you don't have a race committee person telling you what channel the line's favored, but the reason I'm saying that I want some competitiveness on this starting line. I want to see people close. I want to see people battling for this pin. I don't want to see one boat just dominating off the line. I want to see the whole crowd come in here. So this this wind has shifted to the left. Now interestingly enough. There is, we're looking over to the left here, there's a big gust coming down the river. It's about 40 seconds away, 45 seconds. It'd be interesting to see what teams have spotted that and, and planned ahead. The big gust coming down the middle of the river right now. 20 seconds. 20 seconds, 20 seconds and we need to get going. We need to get going basically. Now 1543 has a chance of port tacking. And they're going to do it. Wow, and 1543 port tacked. 1578 came in on starboard. Probably 1754 might have fouled them. And it was a pretty feisty start to say the least. So port tack is very lifted right now. And there's that big gust coming down the middle of the river. It's more left phase. It's time to really hike out, get the boat moving, keep the boat level, more breeze, more left shift. It's time to hike out now, really get that boat level. T35 is trying to stay off 4799. Now they've elected to tack, tack away. They, they, they can afford to trim on, they're on starboard. Get the boat going. 
47977 could get everyone up to weather. That's nice, and now you can tack inside them probably. Ready about? Wind's gone left, isn't it? Um, so the wind's really shifted to the left here, making Starboard Giant heavily favoured. See how Spinnaker's go. When you free find the spinnaker uh, without a pole, it can be helpful to go without a twing and again heal the boat to windward. Now, this crew is definitely short handed, but um, in the ideal world, you'd have the jib down, the main out further, and you can see the bang is a little bit on the top side, on the tight side with the top batten. But they're doing a nice job, they're, they're getting it flying. So, so a dousing here. One thing that really helps is overhaul that starboard guy for her. You know, dump it out and thrust it forward. Then grab it in front. That's it. Really thrust it forward. That's nice. That really beats the friction in the system. Nice job. Now let's practice, go about a boat length and a half wide of this buoy and let's go up to close hold around it and when you're trimming the jib, just trim the jib very slowly, strictly to the telltales. I would start in on the main a little earlier. Try starting in on the main now. Now take your turn. Once you're up to close hole, pinch up and get that inside telltale to flutter slightly. That'll make sure you're absolutely on the wind. Nice job. Yeah. Yeah, the knife, yeah. That was good. And of course, I'm pointing the camera in the wrong direction, but we're going to do some lured mark roundings here. Back of the short lake. What we're doing here is some lured mark roundings. And really what I'm looking for is teams to go wide and then tight. I'm looking for the main to be trimmed in rapidly and the jib to be trimmed perfectly through every point of sail. Because remember, you're going from a run to a broad reach to a beam reach to a close reach to close hold. You want to trim that jib perfectly to the telltales. Now, the other thing that we're looking for is once you're up to close hold, we're looking for the boat to be pinched up slightly. In other words, here's 47977. I'd like to see that main trim right in hard. I'd like to see the bow go up. I'd like to see the inside telltale on the jib from the premise of it being fully trimmed. I'd like to see it flutter. And what, what that does is it uses the speed that you, that you gain by the rounding and it translates it into height. So let's see how they, these boats are doing here. Now, if you're coming in on starboard like this, you've got right away, you can do a tactical rounding. It's 15.43, taking a jive. They're going to see if they can cut inside. I like it. So the trick is, if you're coming in on starboard and you have to jive as an integral part of the rounding, the advice is to really, and there's some good roundings there. 15.43, incidentally, did a nice job of getting up high there. But... If you're coming in on starboard and you have to jive, pre-trim the mainsail at least halfway. And the other thing you can do is what I call a check luff, which is once you're up to close hold, 
pinch up cycle, get the inside tail tail and the jib to flutter, and you use what that does is it uses some of the speed that you've gained by the rounding and translates it into height. And that gets you up half a ladder rung to weather, which gets you out into clearer air and enables you to stay in a lane longer on port tack when you round the buoy, especially if there's somebody that's rounded ahead of you. Let's see how these guys do. That was a nice rounding. I liked it. They pinched up slightly. They got some, some height. Now let's see how 1754 does. Get her up there now and see the main wants to be on, followed by the jib and then a little bit of a check luff. By a check luff I mean just pinch up five degrees and use that speed to, to climb to windward and get yourself into clearer air to a higher ladder rung. Breeze is picking up a little bit here for us. There's another rounding on 1509. here you can see the space you can fit a cal 20 in there and obviously that's something you don't want to do you don't want you want to do a rounding where if they would have put it in their bow inside you their options would be either to hit you or hit the mark and uh, here's 1543 coming in now here's an instance coming in on starboard see how they do but as I say I recommend you trim the main halfway prior to the jibe so you don't have to spend so much time getting it in. Let's see how they do. So we want to go a little bit wider than we are right now. See 1578 has got a tough rounding ahead of them as you can see because they're tight on this side that's going to make them a little bit narrow on the other side. A little wide, rather. Now, on 1578, the trick is to pinch right up and use that speed to gain height. It actually worked out quite well. But again, don't be bashful. Pinch up slightly and get your height. Let's see how this group of boats does here. These lured mark roundings are so crucial in a race. There's, there's Positions are gained and lost at the corners, at the weather mark and at the leeward mark. So your goal is to get very smooth here. You can see 1535 was was shut out by 549. 549 did a nice job of getting the bow up there and getting the boat nice and level. If you happen to be pinned outside somebody, slow the boat down. You don't want to go round outside somebody, you'd rather round behind them. Slow the boat down. By slowing the boat down, you could overturn the mainsail, carve a series of S turns, or take the spinnaker down before they do for sure, and then round behind them rather than outside them. By rounding out behind them, you'll give yourself the option to tack and clear your wind. And that's an instance where I think the main, I mean, the main did come in, but I'd like to see it preset just a little bit more. This team has got a very tight vang. I like the look of their mainsail for this new wind. The sail is a lot flatter. Let's see what other teams, how other teams do to react to uh, this increasing uh, wind velocity. We'll be back. Well, we're back. Uh, we tried moving the pin. It's just, it's just a little bit involved to be moving buoys and trying to keep momentum going and everyone going and you know racing what have you. So we've left the pin as it is, just in the interest of getting more starts and more races in. Ideally, we would have, we, our intention was to shift this pin down probably about six bolt lengths, try and square things up. Interestingly enough, we saw a right shift come in, which has squared our beat up a little bit. We're sort of hoping that holds. Um, interestingly enough, you know, as we pan over looking further upwind here, again, thinking about theory of using cruising boats as reference guides, you can see there's a, a cruising boat coming downwind with just the main only on 
support, that indicates that maybe the wind has shifted a little bit to the right further up the course. So, like I say I'm a big fan of um, looking up wind for, for angles of boat sailing to tell you about the long range velocity and shifts that are coming down. We're within a minute here, we'll be back with you shortly. Here we are, we're back, and here's our starting line. It's actually not too long, it's, it's longer than yesterday, but it's actually still pretty competitive for this group. And it's 30 seconds. Now, really don't want to see anyone tacking or jiving within 20 seconds here. I'd like to see boats on the final approach. And let's see how we go. We've got uh, 1578 coming in on... S They're over. They're over. There we go, and there's the start. So, a couple of individual recalls. Some of the boats are late. Now, 15.43 has a nice start, and they've consolidated it by tacking on the port and crossing. Uh, 17.54. And we are going to do a general recall. So we're underway, we've done a little bit of race committee work. Kind of proud of ourselves here, we've got a pretty short square line. We've seen a head to win reading on uh, 265. They went head to win, they didn't show any particular favor one way or the other. Obviously before, Pinan was very favored and Port Tack was favored crossing the line as well. But now we've shortened it up and we've squared it up. So let's see how the fleet reacts to this. I like to see boats a little bit closer to the line than they are. There's the fleet sailing off on uh, Port Tack. So definitely a shorter line for the group here. Let's see how they do. Current's still sweeping, obviously. We see a little bit of sweep more to the left here towards this river off to our left. Two minutes. We figure we've given the teams enough time to get oriented. We've seen a couple of head to wind readings. I'd like to see more head to wind readings. Checking this line and seeing what the new shift is coming down. We'll be back with you very shortly on this one. Yep. <laughs> Breeze kicking in here. Tacking over, need to release the jib, go for it. Off they go. Jib probably needs to trim a little bit harder, but they're overstood actually. Interestingly enough. We'll be back with you. It looks like it looks like the had let go on this boat. Unfortunately, it was a really good set, and then it, it unfortunately the Halley had let go. But hey, they were able to recover it. That's the main thing. Let's see if 1509 can go wing on wing. They might be going for a spinnaker. Looking up ahead, I'd like to. See I, I see some nice spinnaker work there. Here yeah, they're healing to weather. That's fast. On the lead boat, the white spinnaker and the pink spinnaker. Got the boats, the spinnaker's nicely shaped, proper pole height, mains eased out 90 degrees to the boat. Healing to weather here. Purple spinner trying spinnaker trying to work down inside as much as they can, try and get an inside overlap. Other teams going downwind. 1509, they've set the spinnaker. If you're fully crewed, you'd definitely be dropping the jib right now. It's 
square the pole back. I think 1509 needs to square the pole back. We'll go, we'll go and see them. This element, they're going just wing on wing with a jib, but it's nice. Got the main eased out 90 degrees to the boat. The bang looks nicely set with the top band parallel to the boom. They're feeling the boat to weather a little bit with their crew weight. That helps the luff of the, the uh, top of the jib get away from the blanketing effect of the main. Looks nice. So we're going to try a stretch and blow takedown here. We're going to pull the sheet in. Yeah, pull it. No, leave the pole out. That's it. Leave the pole up. Leave the pole up. It's okay. Leave it there. Okay, now tighten the spinnaker sheet. Good. That's it. Now blow the halyard. Just let it go. That's it, let it go, completely let it go. Now gather in the, the center of the foot and the leech. Good. Gather in the leech a little bit more. That's it. Now release the guy for him and overhaul the guy for him. Nice job. See how controlled that was? Excellent. Well, we've created a monster here. We've uh, made the starboard end very favored here. We've done it deliberately. I want to see how people do in terms of ley line approach, slowing the boat down, avoiding barging and things of that nature. So short line, but very favored towards the starboard end. And I uh, just want to see how it goes. I mean, very often this happens. Either the committee sets a very, commi uh, uh, very uh, starboard end favor or the wind shifts to the right late in the sequence. So let's see how teams deal with this. You'll be able to figure out which end's favor just based on sail trim running up and down the line and the head to wind reading as well. So uh, let's see how they do figuring this out. And we'll be back with you for the next start. Interesting thing about this line, it's monstrously favored to the starboard end. You can see how eased this boat's sails are coming at us towards the pin. If you're very eased on starboard, Sailing from the committee boat end to the pin, that tells you committee boat's favored. A couple of general mantras here. One, it's going to be easy to be early and over the line. Two, it's going to be easy to barge. And three, we need to establish what the safe lay line to that committee boat is so we can come in with confidence and not be barging. So let's see how teams do. We're going to get a sequence on the way. So a minute to go here. And the big test here is one, not barging. Two, coming in on a safe lay line, i.e. not force the wrong side of the line, and three, slowing the boat down and holding position. Some of the things we talked about this morning and also last night after uh, racing. So let's see how we go. The fleet basically is to switch its mentality right now. With the pin end very favored, it was easy to be late, uh, things of that nature, but now let's see how they're doing. I like, I like some of the moves here. Maybe if you need to slow down, poke the bow up, luff the jib, blow the vang if you have to. 1754 is doing a port tack approach. They're tacking into leeward. Now 1535 is up against it, aren't they? Uh-oh, they've got leeward boats. And this is where Five, it can be problematic. Four, three, two, one. 1754, I believe, is over early. Over early's there, and I believe 1543 was over too. But um, now, if you're 1509, you're now tacking away to clear wind. Okay, we're just um, we're going up wind with this team. I like this jib trim a lot more. They they. Move that jib track out a little bit more. You can see up aloft, the, uh, before what I was seeing was the sail was sheeted very close to the center line down low, but it was actually very open up top. Now we've, we've dropped the traveler down a little bit. That to me looks like a better shape. We're trimming to about the, somewhere between the, the first and second pieces of tape on the spreaders. To me, that leech has a better profile to it. The uh, middle telltale is flying the vast majority of the time, which is usually a fairly good sign. 
usually actually if it's flying all the time you can trim the jib a little bit on the tighter side So one minute 40 seconds to go here, starboard end very favoured. So one minute to go, let's see how the fleet picks up on this very starboard end favoured. Um, there's our, our starboard end over here, here's the fleet. We're going to motor down a little bit if we can, get ourselves a, a little nearer to the line. Give ourselves a little more depth perception. Uh, 30 seconds. 30 seconds here. It's really a question of getting yourself low, getting down toward the pin and then luffing up. Less than 20 seconds. 47977 luffing here. 1754 set themselves up down below. That's the start. All clear. And the fleet gets off the line. Nice start on 1509. They nailed the starboard end. 1543 is tacked off to clear their went. Now on on this boat, we need more alcohol. It looks like there's two, two pull down low. We'll talk about that. Too much heel as well. You can see the, whenever you can see the waterline like that, that's too much. So, tighter alcohol, possibly more backstay. The wind's increased. It's really increased here. Packed on. Well, we're back. It's getting windier as you can see. a little bit more power. Now on this boat I think we've got the jib sheeted too tight. Got to ease the jib on those as well. Now tacking. Getting a little more effective. Breezy. It's definitely a jibe set right now. Throw it up. Throw the spinnaker up. Hoist it up. Jive. The wind has shifted to the right here, which I think is good. But it would be a great situation to do a jive set, to throw it up off the bow or hoist it off on the starboard side and jive simultaneously. And I like it. Now that they can just jive the mainsail across on 1509, tug the port sheet. Get the spinnaker going in front of the boat. It looks like they're electing to go with a pole. Nice job there of flying the spinnaker over on the right here. I'd like to see them drop the jib if they could. Some of the shorthanded crews are going with um, with no pole, which I think is understandable in the short course scenario, but they're doing a nice job here of flying that spinnaker. Keeping the boat to weather is, is a uh, definite technique. Stops the top of the spinnaker from oscillating behind the mainsail and collapsing. This looks nice. Um, the only thing I'd like to see is a couple things. The main eased out further. I'd like to see the body weight to weather. That's nice. That gets a shoot away. Uh, I'd like to see more outhaul. It looks like down low the outhaul is a little bit on the loose side. 
And the other thing is the bang is a little bit on the tight side. You can see the top batten hooking in slightly, but otherwise we're doing a nice job here. Nice job of flying the kite through. So we've really got this boat going well here. We've put a little more alcohol on. We've uh, eased the bang off to keep the top batten parallel. Now we're going jib up. There you go. Now we're going to take the spinnaker down. We're gathering it into leeward. Nice job doing it. And we'll be back with you. They just did a conventional leeward takedown there. So a couple of boats coming into the uh, leeward mark here. Let's see how their rounding goes. Remember, wide tight. Do a little check luff at the end. See how you go. Let's come up to close haul on brown sugar. You can see that was a little bit late on the turn. That's it, now trim the jib perfectly to the telltales. Just trim it in slowly. That's it, jib in now. Keep going on the jib, go, 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 that's it. Full trim, that's it. Really get the bodies hiked out and off we go there. Okay. Okay, last lesson, uh, probably about 30 seconds, I think. Yeah, Here's our starting line here. And uh, it's, this is the last race of the day. We've had a lot of races today. Some of the fleet's gonna be late, but I think they're gonna be going at least full speed. 1754 laying off. General recall. Well, here we are. Two minutes to go. Last race. We didn't general recall that long. That last one. We wanted to see the fleet a little bit closer to the line. And uh, this is going to be our last race. We use spinnakers, and uh, we'll be sailing in. We're going to be doing a wrap up uh, towards uh, at the end here about 4.45 in the afternoon. We've had lots of good starts and races today. It's been uh, good sailing. It's been wonderful sailing, actually, both last night and today. Really perfect conditions for this type of situation and just general sailing. So, the committee boat is still favored. We've left it that way deliberately. We're trying to give the fleet different looks. We had the pin end favored before. We've got the committee boat favored now. We want to see who can slow their boat down and hold position and not barge. So let's see how this start goes. Starting line over to our left. We're within a minute. Okay, here we go. Here's the start of the last race. Fleet is definitely closer to the line this time. I like to see that. Five, four, four, three, two, one, gun. That was a much better start. We've got at least three boats off the line. Very competitively, we've got three boats late. Let's see how we go here. We're going to join you with the weather mark. Well, it's been an excellent day out here. The breeze has really kicked in. That was a great last race. We'll see you back at the Yacht Club for a uh, review of the day. But absolutely superb conditions for the fleet today to be able to start and race and round marks and get lots of really good practice. Probably some very tired sailors, I'd imagine. And let's just pan over here to this cruising boat who's having a wonderful time. Look, their power reaching across the river. Really steaming along. You can see them coming right at us for the full Janua. So we'll see you back at the club.